more confidence you'll have at nine o'clock on an exam morning saying, right, I've done as much as I possibly can. I'm ready for this. Let's do this. Do you have any recommended study plans? I mean, I'm sure you guys have seen a lot of students come through. Oh, so. we have. And look, everyone's different. It's a good yeah, question. Of course. I mean, I'm quite of a visual course. studier, so I was all about um, my maps, and I draw a whole bunch of my maps with through my studies. Um, but beyond that, just to give you my 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 approach is I read. Um, so I tend to. So I was in your position. Uh, 2014 is when I got my PMP. 2011 was when I got my CAPM. Um, and I remember reading um, Pinbot Guide um, for my CAPM, and I read Rita's book for my PMP. And I was going through page by page Rita's read Rita's book from start to finish. And every page that I read, I had a notebook. And I um, either drew a mind map or um, basically summarized the key points on that page in, a, in language that I was familiar with. So you could probably summarize our, our page of Rita's book in probably about three or four sentences. That's what I was doing. It's quite high level, right? This is the guts of what this is. I might draw a diagram, whatever it might be. Now, the process of me reading something, thinking about it, and transcribing it into my own words was enough for me to study. I didn't once actually review any of my notes. Okay, mm -hmm. the, the notes weren't there for me to review. The notes were there as part of a process for me to absorb the material. If that works for you, great, use that. Um, you've got a stack of notes you can review, you know, a week prior to the exam, but um, it's just the uh, effort of reading something, thinking about it and transferring it into a pencil and paper or pen on paper was um, my approach. Mm -hmm. All, right. All right, let's jump into... Um, the application process. Now I'm going to start, well, I'm going to share my screen in a second, but I'm going to start, by the way, this has been recorded. So if you want to watch this again, um, Bronwyn will share this uh, in due course. Um, now, if you're anyone in the room, just put your hand up if you are going for the CAPM exam. Okay, I can't see any hands and there's a couple of videos off. Oh, so Joanna? We were told this was only for PMP. Okay. Let's, let's just jump straight to PMP then. Okay, so let me share my screen. Um, we, PMI have just changed the exam application process that made it a bit easier for you guys, which is good news. And um, I'll share my screen and take you through the updated template that's now on our website. So it may look different depending on when you downloaded our, our version of the template. Now, the first thing I'll say is the reason why we have this template well, where this template came from is we went through the PMP application process a while ago and, and scraped it and basically created a whole bunch of fields. Can you see my Word document up on screen at the moment? Yep. Yep. There's a bit of stuff at the start um, around just FYI, have a bit of a skim through this. Now, I guess it's all about audits and to make sure whatever information you put forward, you need to have the ability to back this up. Um, it, looks, it works very similar to the tax system in New Zealand. By, by default, people assume you're telling the truth, but they could at any point in time pick up your application, say, we're going to order this, please show us evidence behind this. Um, so we don't want to um, lie to PMI. We don't want to stretch the truth. Uh, we need to tr re represent it in, I guess, the most factual format possible, uh, where you've got copies of certificates and signatures from your, say, your, your senior stakeholder or your uh, manager or your sponsor throughout the course of your project. And uh, we'll give you a certificate around the PM education hours as well. Um, so there's three sections of the application. One is around your general education, okay, so your schooling, your highest level of schooling, and that will dictate how much experience you need to then submit. So if you have a degree, um, which is a bachelor's degree, so a three or a four year degree or above, then you're required to submit four and a half thousand hours or um, it's about three years, so it's that, that um, 36 months of project management experience. If you do not have a degree, so you passed high school, you might have a certificate, you might have a diploma, then you require five years of experience. Okay, so about 60 months of project management experience. So I'll get to the experience in a second, but basically this first, I guess, page in your application, your schooling would dictate how much effort you need to put into the second part. So look, since you put your highest quali qualification here, there is a drop down list. These are some of the options there. There might be others in the form now, but basically just put whatever is your highest. Um, you know, some people don't have certificates from high school, so we've never actually been asked, not through my experience in, in being involved in this training for the last eight years, for someone to provide something from their high school. Um, but hey, look, you know, if you do have something, then I'd use that. So if you went to, you say you, you left high school in fifth form, but then got a um, level four certificate in 
some sort of a plumbing apprenticeship or whatever it might be, then I'll be using that. If you've got a diploma certificate from a tertiary institution, then I'll use that. So just put you know, some details here around the year it was awarded, what school or university gave it to you. These are all sort of open fields. Uh, you'll have to put the address. Um, now sometimes people, you know, these organizations have changed names. So I got my, my bachelor's degree and my graduate diploma in project management from CPIT. Now it's rebranded re as ARA. So I'll be putting CPIT in that because CPIT is what's on my certificate. Okay, so make sure you put the name of what's on your certificate. Now, if there's opportunity to say this is now being rebranded as ARA, then, you know, great, put that as well. Yeah, they keep everything on file from previous uh, applications. I mean, I know I sat a different exam a few years ago. You think they keep anything on file? Do they keep anything on file? Yeah, PMI. Would, would yes, they, they, have they, they do. So you, your okay. PMI profile, if you've, mm -hmm. so you know, Alex, you've got some other PMI certifications. Um, they will have, they'll have a, a history of that. So, you know, if I you've don't already have got, it, but I did, I did set the exam for the PMI SP about four years ago. I'm just yeah. wondering whether they have all the backing up documentation from my application. Correct. Yes, they, they normally do. So when I, so I've got CAP and PMP and PMI ACP. After mm -hmm. I set my PMP and went and got my PMI ACP, all my education, my, my work experience was there. And because right. they knew I had PMP, there was a shortcut I went down with the application for the Agile certification. So that, that mm -hmm. history should be there. I mean, things have changed over the years and, and perhaps you may have applied and just before they modernized the website. I don't know, but look, this is back in 2013 and 14 for me, they had the history. Yep. Um, any questions around just your general education? I mean, it should be pretty straightforward, but um, any just, questions, let me know now. Just a question on education here. Um, because I'm, I'm actually on the, on the page here. And it says academic education secondary degree. Well, I have a bachelor's degree. So say that again, Mohammed. So, so you, what was the option? You're a little bit quiet there. In the education, um, it, it has, it, it highlighted that I have a secondary degree under the academic education while I have a bachelor's degree. Yep, so, so, so secondary degree is essentially the American term for passing high school. Okay. Okay. So, but, but I have I have listed my academic education as bachelor's degree. Yes. So sorry, so is, is there a drop down with a, a limited number of options you can choose from? Uh, yeah, but I was expecting under academic education to say um, undergraduate, university undergraduate or something, or bachelor's degree, not to say secondary degree. So what options do you have in that? In that? Is there a drop-down field, Mohammed? There is, there is, yeah. Okay, so what are, what are the options in the drop-down field? Actually. Do you, do, you want to share your, do you have the ability to share your screen or are you on two different devices? Uh, no, no. Uh, no. You can, can you see my screen now? Okay, yes. Uh, it's a little bit, I mean, you're quite small, but... Uh, okay. And it's here. Bachelor degree. Okay, I'm a little bit confused about what's going on. So you, you've, 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 you've submitted a bachelor's degree, yeah. and on the right-hand side, it, it's already sort of, it's sort of ticked the box against saying you've got a skin degree. Yep, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Okay. Not can, you, can, you, can you go and can you edit your bachelor's degree submission? Yeah, I did that. Click on that one there. Let's just have a look at what fields are in there. So, so the reason why I can't do this myself is because I've already got the PMP application, so I can't actually get into, and all of our trainers have the same thing, so we actually can't get into the screen that Mohammed's saying here. So these are the options I have. Right, can you read them out to me? I can't see those, mate. So high school, associate degree, bachelor degree, master's. Yep. And doctorate, that's the okay. last one. So you've, you've selected a bachelor's degree, yep. Yep, filled everything. And date, field of study, save. Yep. And then it's automatically coding that as a tick against having a secondary degree. Yeah. Okay. Now, so, so while I go on to the next topic, um, It'd be good if you can go to the next page and confirm for me how many hours it's asking you to then submit for your project experience. Okay, so it recognized my uh, Prince 2. That's one. Okay, for your PM education. Yep, we'll come to that in a second. So you go to the next yeah. area. I suspect they teach, yes, uh, they, they, they treat high school as your primary degree, Mike. That could be an option. 
Yeah. So, so basically, it, it, what it's done, it's coded it correctly, Muhammad, is, is essentially, it, it's for some reason, it's been coded as a, as a secondary degree, but it's still classed as, as the degree required to then make you eligible for the three years of effort, as opposed to the five years of effort. So I wouldn't be concerned about that. You're, you're on the right path. Okay. Good. Great. Thanks for sharing that, Muhammad. Any other questions around the general education? Okay. Let's jump into the um, experience section. So this is your opportunity to tell PMI why you, or what you've been doing as a project manager. I guess the first thing I'll, I'll say here, this is not you talking about the project, this is talking about your role on the project. You need to remember that PMI are quite protective of their certification. They want to make sure that the right people, or they're approving the right people to go on and sit this exam. So this is the, this, the screening process, and they're gonna judge you, your experience as a project manager, based on what you're putting into this form here, or this, these fields. And it's your job to sell yourself as being a competent and experienced project manager. Now, of course, of course you've got to do that within the context of the projects you delivered. So let's take a look at the fields, and I'll, I'll zoom in a bit, take a look at the fields that we'll be talking, we'll, that they're asking you to fill out here. So you do this once per project. Now, there is a bit of a gray area here because in the New Zealand context, it's quite common for our projects to be, you know, for some organizations, some industries, a couple of weeks work, maybe a month's work, maybe sort of three months work. And, you know, if you're looking to get five years of experience or three years of experience, you could be looking at quite a large handful of projects. It's gonna take you quite a bit of time to document your experience across say 36 projects. We had one client um, at the University of the Christchurch City Council who drafted a, um, a PMP application with 76 project experience summaries. That took her hours to fill out and I'm not suggesting anyone should do that. I don't think there's value in doing that. But PMI are wanting to see project-based experience. You, we have seen students being called out in the past where PMI are saying, you've, you've grouped a bunch of projects here as a program. We're not looking for program management experience, we're looking for project management experience. So you've got to be very, very careful on your wording here. Please avoid using any reference to the word program. That's P-R-O-G-R-A-M or P-R-O-G-R-A-M-M-E. Just do not use those words in um, your application. Why? Because the pro program management experience, PMI believe, is relevant to their program management certification. They've got a PGMP. Okay, and we had feedback from PMI in the past, one of our students saying, hey, great, that's really good experience, but we can't apply that to PMP because it's more relevant to the PGMP. So if you are in a situation where you've got a whole bunch of similar projects all related to the same area, treat that as a project with multiple work streams. Okay, that, that's been allowed in the past. So you've got, you know, if, if they're all for the same area of the organization, maybe the same business unit or the same customer, but the whole sort of rats and mice bits and pieces, then treat them as an overall, overall wider project with different work streams that you've managed throughout and just do one summary on that. Mike, yes. what happens if your title is program slash project manager? Yep, good question. So um, PMI have not given us any firm, or well, based on my experience with people's applications, they haven't pushed people back on not having a project manager role title. So let's just talk about, I mean, that, that's the third field there, job title. People can put project manager, program manager, project director, um, solution designer, technical architect. These are just, so many different organizations have different terms for your role, where they formally recognize your role as a project manager or they don't. So look, put your role there. And if, if it's possible, it's always good to somehow align this to a term project manager. But if you can't, don't worry so much about it. But so you're, you're a question, Sharon. Can you put programs as project manager? Sure, put that in there. Uh, no, my title is program slash project manager. Mm -hmm. That was my title. So I just wanted to make yep. sure that they weren't going to, you know, like. So there's a job title and then there's a project role as well, right? So, yeah, it's, it's kind not, of confusing. Not anymore. So where'd you see that, Ross? Oh, just there on your screen, a bit further down. Oh, so that's, that's, that's a, um, just give me a second. I took a, a snapshot of the screen. That could be a, I just thought I'd do this, this um, table today and that might be a, um, 
the stats not there anymore and oh, yeah. just primary it's industry there's, yeah Job this one here is important area yeah that's that's an error on my behalf i should have deleted those extra fields today they oh, used to ask for those i used to don't have to put an industry in there at all so you've got titles like senior mechanical engineer or something that doesn't even relate to project management. You okay. still think put that yeah, in? Yeah, that's fine. You know, we've had people do that in the past, Ross. Yep. yep. Okay. So, uh, right. So project title, but obviously the, the title of the project, um, organization name. Uh, and again, if your organization has changed names, then put the former name and then put in brackets rebranded as such and such, you know, we've done that in the past. Um, and your job title. They, um, um while you're there, I've got my application open at the moment. You want me to share a screen so you can see the original right now. If, if you don't mind sharing, Anya, yep, that'll be super. Yeah. Let me let me stop sharing my screen and then I can give some commentary to the Let's wizard. Share. So they, you set up these templates as though we can just copy straight across and bang yeah, straight and, in. and I'll get to the reason behind that in a second. Um, yeah. Oh, right, share screen, right. Can, um, you see, can you see a screen now or do I have to make you co-host? Um, host disabled, right, right, right. Can't do it. Okay, just a second. Awfully extra special. Right? There you go, you've got extra special rights now, aren't you? Right, looking at that one. Does that work? Yeah, it's come out now. Yeah, great. On. Okay, so here is the, the basically wizard online. Okay, so you got project title there, organization, so Land Care Research New Zealand Limited, and you are the contract manager. Now, functional reporting area, can you give us a drop down, open up the drop down list, please? So, customer service, finance, HR, IT, marketing. I assume there's an other at the bottom there, is there? Yeah. Yeah, okay. And if you click other, does it give you a free text field? Um, yeah, I had to do it. In, okay, yeah. there we go. Yeah. Thank you. So just go back and select what it was. So they're basically wanting to work out which area and of course your, your primary focus. So you've put an other for research and yeah. um, I imagine there's, there's a other, there's a whole bunch of other default options there. Yeah, before there's selecting other. Um, okay. okay. So you should be able to hopefully have a link your organization's area of business in this as well. Approach methodology. So the way your project was delivered, traditional, agile, and hybrid. Um, and I'm going to say, I'm going to have a bit of a guess that most people would be able to select hybrid. They'll be taking a bit of both worlds. But look, it, you know, PMI is not going to judge your application on this. There's not a need currently to have X amount of experience in traditional and X amount of experience in, in agile. But that's probably going to change next year. Um, so yeah, don't worry too much about that. Team size, there's a whole bunch of different uh, groupings here. So one to four, what else have we got? That's only you and your team, eh? That's not your stakeholders, any of that other around yeah. sponsors and all that. It's literally just the people that work on it, eh? Not I'd say you're just your immediate team. And I, I imagine this is actually feeding into some some gr greater research that PMI is going into actually work out what's oh. the general average, average size teams across projects, you know, across your world. And yeah, it's just them getting a bit of research and then project budgets there as well. Can you change the, um, the dollar amount no. or is it all in US dollars? No, and it's, it's, this is the lowest. And it's just because yeah. of crazy, crazy. Yeah. There you go. So that's, I mean, that's a, it's, you know, it's quite often that us in little old New Zealand, we're constantly delivering projects less than a million dollars. I mean, sure, we've got lots of projects which are well out above that, but there's so many projects we work on which are underneath that category. So you've got to think that PMI is trying to generate a form which is going to be least hassle and most applicable to everybody across the globe. So this is what the, the categories have come up with. And Anya, what happens when you put a month and year in for the end date? Does that automatically tally that as months and whack it onto your experience? Or? It does. It, it calculates the months for you. I'll try that. I'll just make something up. So on the right hand side where it says total of zero of 60, 36 months, you, once you once Tanya's in a position to submit this form, it basically then tallies them up and you keep entering project experience oh, until that counter on the right hand oh, side yeah. adds up to 36 or more. Because then it used to be th so many thousand hours, but now it they're just did. sticking yeah. to 36 months. So the nice thing about this, they used to ask people to break it down by hours per um, process, uh, domain. So you're initiating, mm. planning, executing, monitoring, controlling, and closing. But now they're just giving you a date range and they'll work out the months because you require 36 months to be eligible. Cool, okay. And they just assume that that whole time you're project managing, I guess. Uh, look, I guess so. Um, 
you know, it'll be quite interesting to see how the uh, the math works around, you know, multiple timelines and whether or not, I assume they'll just count that month once, even though you worked on two projects. Yeah. They 36 months in total. You may have done that maybe 80 hours a week over a period of months. So therefore, you know, you'd like to be able to count that twice, but because it's in the same month, I'm sure, I'm assuming they'll just count that once. And as a rule, is it better when you do have overlapping experience, is it better to just draw a line in the sand, pick an arbitrary date and sort of allocate like X months to one project and X months to the other and just sort of cherry pick the good bits that you need to make the different groups work? Uh, look, good question. I mean, you, you've got a call around, you know, how, which projects to select. You've got just this, this whole experience, you know, summarizing your role as a project manager must be within the last eight years. And so my advice will be choose the biggest projects you worked on in the last eight years. Don't choose the most recent five. Choose the biggest projects because, you know, ideally you want to put, um, you know, as little effort as possible to get the application sorted. And like if you've got some big, big hairy projects which sort of consume a lot of time, that I'll be using those first and then working out your smaller projects until you hit over that 36-month mark. Um, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't fiddle with your project start date and end dates too much, um, you know, if they overlap, great, they overlap, but just remember that they'll only be counting that month once. Yeah, righto. And I, so with some of my projects, for example, so I ran multiple projects. They were similar, like same templates, but because they were different people and, you know, there were different constraints, you could count them each as different projects, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. But because they're quite similar, I might say it's a project with multiple work streams, so I'm not repeating myself over Correct. and over and over. Yeah. But these would be like 20 hours a week. And I could say this happened over two years. But it's 20 hours a week. Sorry, you're going to hear a child crying. Um, it's, um, but it's only part time over two years. Yeah. But is it still going to count that as 24 months worth, even but, though can I have other projects on the go at that same time that I could count? Yeah. That's a, that's a really good question. I don't know, because I mean, they're just asking for these fields here. Um, that's why they used to do it by hours, because they could actually break it down whether you're working 20 hours a week or 40 hours a week. Mm -hmm. um, and based on what I'm seeing here, it's going to assume if you worked in July, then you worked the entire month of July on this project, so that's a month's worth of experience. Mike? Um, yeah. <laughs> Hi, I, uh, I submitted mine on Saturday yeah. um, and where I had overlapping projects, what they did is they didn't count the hours for that. So even though I worked 20 hours per week on one specific little project, which lasted yep. three months, they didn't take the hours for that at all. They just, it just sat there as a zero hours. Yeah, but because you already had a project covering that month, didn't you? Those months, is that what you're saying? Yep, exactly. Yeah, great. Yep. So they're assuming, and Johanna, I guess that answers your question. They're assuming that you worked on this full time, which is, I guess, probably to, to your advantage. Yeah, you, you could, you could count it. You could still count, even though they don't count that month, you could still count, use that separate project for a specific group. Like if you did a lot of initiating in that project, you might still want to whack it in there, even though it overlapped and it's not going to count for additional months. You could probably still use it if you needed to, to demonstrate particular knowledge in a certain area, right? Yeah, that's right. I, mean, I, I guess it. if you've got a larger project which spans 12 months, I'll be putting that in first. And then if you got, say, you worked on a three month project in the middle, then I wouldn't bother submitting that because you're not going to get any credit for that. But mm -hmm. if you worked on something that's sort of, say, if it's a 12 month calendar year, you, you had a project going from, say, December through to March, I'd be putting December to March in there. Sure, you won't get December hours, but you get January, February, and March in there as well. So you get an extra three months from the additional four month project. All right. What happens if you're a joint project manager? Um, good question. I'll I would, my advice that. is to avoid um, saying that if possible. So I'd, again, PMI, they've got a person in America who's reading your application and, and you, they need to have full confidence that you've got project experience. So I'd be erring on the side of caution and don't saying that, you know, I worked with a pro another project manager to help deliver this. Just focus on the work you did. So if you worked on establishing a budget, coming up with a, a schedule, uh, managing risks, monitoring change, all that sort of good stuff, then just, it doesn't matter that you did it with someone else. Just tell them what you did. So that, I guess, does lead me to this, this big box here, this project description. So you have 200 to 500 words. So this is another change they've made uh, where it used to be 500 characters, which is basically a paragraph. So now you get the option to extend it to a couple of paragraphs, which is a good thing. Uh, now, um, Mike, can I ask you a question? Uh, who is it? Who is that? Who is uh, that? Okay. Uh, oh, hiya. Hiya. Uh, I, I'm working on a project, but uh, I have worked from two different com uh, companies for this one project. So one is I was in Tokyo, 
to set up a new joint venture in New Zealand. And I mostly did the initiating and the planning and a bit of execution. And then I moved to New Zealand and now work for the joint venture we set up. So should we treat this as one project? Um, uh, are they related projects or are they completely separate uh, projects? It's a completely the same project. So for all you just treat it as one project. So if you, I mean, it doesn't doesn't matter because you, ch you change countries and you maybe change roles slightly or focus slightly. You just I mean, you just treat it as one one project. And then, so I should I put the two organization names? Um, I'd I'd maybe put in the project description that it was it was you know, a combination mm -hmm. of two companies coming together or an overlap or whatever mm -hmm. it might be. So put that in the experience. Just put the main mm -hmm. organization name that you spent most mm -hmm. of the time in 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 the top of the section. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, thank you. Great. Are we Hi. trying, um, sorry, Mike, are we trying to avoid language that would move away from the project management role? I mean, I was always, I've worked on large projects. It's not the size of the project. It's more the fact that I had a very specialized role as usually a planner, a scheduler within a project. So I was never a project manager per se. So that, your, so yeah. your role here is to play project management buzzword bingo. So here is yeah. the format of what this section should be in. And this is, again, why we have it in our template, because we've got some example summaries in this. But okay. essentially, in this field here, the first sentence should be what the project is. So state the project objective, you know, what we are there to build. That's what all projects are, they're building something, they're delivering something new, they're something of value. State what that is. The, um, the last sentence of this description should be the outcome of the project, i.e. the project was delivered successfully and adopted by the customer or the project was halted halfway through because of a change in organization priorities or the project was ended up terribly wrong. I mean, I, I try and avoid um, telling stories of failed projects, but you know, if it did end um, you know, uh, unsuccessfully, then you need to state that. They, they have asked in the past people to state the outcome of the project. But the guts of this project experience summary is all about your role. So again, it's not about the project. You've summarized it in one sentence. That's all we're looking for. It's your role. So again, you've got people in, um, in Philadelphia? No. Anyway, PMI in the States, uh, I think it's Philadelphia, who don't know you and they have to make a decision on whether you have the experience to get PMP based on what they're reading here. So you are, and do it by, by your knowledge of the domain. So start off in order sequence in terms of, this is the stuff I did in initiation. So under initiation, um, I uh, read and reviewed the business documents. I drafted the project uh, project charter with a sponsor, identified key stakeholders, and came up with a high level um, view of the project. That's basically the guts of, of initiation. In planning, I come up with a detailed project management plan. I come up with uh, planning around uh, requirements, collection or collective requirements from the key stakeholders and uh, define the scope of the project to come up with a work breakdown structure. I planned our approach to both schedule and cost management. I came up with the, uh, the key activities and, and worked out with the key resources and estimates for those activities. I came up with the schedule. I came up with the project budget. I managed the budget and schedule over time. I um, you know, identified risks, held risk workshop meetings. I, uh, had, I wrote monthly status reports. I engaged senior stakeholders throughout the course of the project. I um, managed uh, communications. I reported on the, the or work with the project team to lead the quality initiatives, initiatives across the project. I, um, what, not, not, I managed procurement. So we engaged an external vendor or a contracting agency to, to engage a certain deliverer of the project. So I oversaw the engagement of their contractor, the performance management of their contractor. You just, you should read table 1.1 1 .1 or 1 1.4, the big, glossary of the, of the Pinbot Guide, uh, which we have in our course materials, and try and reference, not everything, because that sounds a little bit corny, but just for the things you did on your project, use the PMI terms. You may call them differently. Um, here in New Zealand, or you might call it a program and instead of a schedule, use the term schedule, because that's the language PMI use. Again, do not use the word program. I see a lot. The most common feedback I get from people's applications is they use the word program for a timeline. That is a schedule. PMI call it a schedule. Right. Um, on the um, vectors, um, not doubling up on that, I volunteered quite a bit for a company doing um, project work and they've 
they're happy to sign that off, but they want to see the exact hours to sign that off, which means we're coming back to the overlapping issue. And, and I cannot say I've done July to March next year, 24 seven, I've done that project because I only volunteer for them twice a week or something. And I know PMI looks really well upon volunteering, but yes, they do, yeah. how there's no field for that, that this is a volunteer job and that you do that after hours and that, you know, you do your normal job and then, and yes, your projects will open it. Otherwise, I'll have to say I've done it all on the weekend. <laughs> No, that's, look, that's a good question. I mean, look, you're right, Pam, I do look uh, favorably involved volunteers and they're very much happy to have volunteer experience in this. Um, but if you worked on it, say, two hours a week over the course of three years, does that give you your experience all in one volunteer initiative? I mean, yeah. arguably, because of what I see here, then it would do. Um, you know, this is a bit, of a bit risky, but you could put under project description, this is a part-time role where I worked, work, say, four hours a week. Now, if they read that, they might say, oh, okay, you've got three years of experience here in this volunteer project but it's only part-time. So they might come back to you um, and say, hey, look, we need some more project experience, please, to, uh, to verify you've got three years of actual experience over the course mm -hmm. of that. So my advice would be if you've got actual full-time work, you know, 20 hours a week more mm -hmm. on, on projects, then I'll be using that over the volunteer capacity. Yeah, well, that doesn't give me no hours. Yeah, okay, so then you've got no choice but to do that. So um, add it in there and... Um, yeah, you might want to maybe change the dates of it so you don't have. I mean, how how long's your volunteering initiative? How long is that that project? Uh, well, I did several months of them. I've volunteered for them for ten years, so I can only go back to twenty twelve. Yes, it's eight years. Yeah, this. Yeah, so years, if yeah. I don't have enough now, I think I don't have quite enough hours in the last six years. I'll have to pull some of those in. And, and go back to your point before. You mentioned that they're only happy to. Um, provide a sign off for this if you show them the hours you worked over that period is that where your volunteer yeah, organization uh, because of the projects uh, they want me to I've put an excel um, in and said oh this is what I, I I've done for you guys are you happy with that and they go yep yeah, we're signing that off and I said well it's going to look different for PMI and they said no no, no we want to we want to make sure that we sign off the dates that you've done this for us so we're yeah, I mean, they, all, all, you, all you need them to be happy with in the rare chance you do get audited, and I'll explain that process in a second, but all you need them to be happy with is say, right, Anya, you worked on from June to October in this particular year. If they're happy with that, then you know, they, don't need, they don't need to, you're not going to tell PMI that you will imply to PMI that you're working 40 hours a week on this. So, you know, they're not, they don't, they're not, oh. um, right. Yeah, they shouldn't be worried about how many hours per week you're doing. All they're asking, PMI's going to ask them to sign off is that you had a start date and end date and here are the dates. Are they happy with those dates? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. What happens if partway through your organisation, your line manager changed? Like I've had that a number of times. Oh, yeah, sure. That's, that's, a, that's a real thing. Um, just put whatever line manager who you, you've got access to. So that does lead me into the next point. I'll, I'll, I'll come back to the project descriptions in a second um, to make sure I really hone on that. But coming to the whole audit process, because obviously there's some, point, there's some questions on that, is essentially what they do is they PDF your application. So what you see on screen here, they, they lock it down into a PDF. They give you one PDF per project summary. So you've got five projects you submit, five PDFs, 10, 10. Okay, and every, your, every, um, I guess sponsor that you put. Actually, go back up. There's no. Where's the? Yeah, I, I'm, that's what I was thinking. You don't put any content details. What happens if you click through this? If you just whack a generic. Yeah, I was looking for that as well. It's just the. That's actually yeah, good point. Can you just um put um just put in the text there field say um um notes Craft. to follow and then hit save experience. And then just, um, oh, you put at least 100 words. <laughs> Let's yeah, make up a story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or copy copy <laughs> a section out of the template straight yeah, in there. Yeah, do you have the template on hand? I can actually give you a section here. Um, oh, I don't. Yeah, if you have one. Because... Or even just copy a stuff article. <laughs> yeah. Copy <laughs> right. Yeah, here's, um, oh, what's going on here? Um, here's, here's some words for you to use. Just copy and paste that. Hopefully that's 100 words. I actually haven't counted it. Copy and paste that into um, the, the form for us, Anya. I'm actually quite glad it's now between 200 and 500 words, not 500 characters, because that was really hard to write when it was 500 characters. Oh, this is ridiculous. This thing is... It's like oh, a tweet. <laughs> this project is a tweet. It must be 100 words. No, no it is more, it's actually. Paste it again. Yeah, copy and paste it again. Yeah, paste it yeah, twice. That's what I did. <laughs> 
<laughs> that's what they did as well. Yeah, here we go. Right. Yeah, right. So yeah. save experience. Let's just see if it's asking for people. Mark, in mine, I PDF mine, and it hasn't asked for any of my contacts. Check me out. Thanks, Ingrid. <laughs> oh, oh, sorry. 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 Uh, okay, um, so, that's, so, so you um, don't recall. Um, ben, can you see my screen? I stopped here. Not yet, mate. Um, yeah, turn your camera uh, around. We, we can see your face again, Ahmed. Smiling, yep. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yep, nothing happened. <laughs> So nothing happened. Okay, so so that tells me that not you don't need to put people's names anymore, which is quite interesting. But let me come back to what I was saying around the audit process. The what they'll do is they'll PDF your application, and uh, they'll give that back to you. And basically, because you're not putting a person's name, they'll, you have to get someone from that organisation, which is going to be quite interesting if they no longer no longer work there. Anyway, the way the audit process works is. For every experience you submit, you have to get a signature from the person who can vouch for your experience. So it's usually a manager or a sponsor or a client, someone who ideally you still have contact with. So, uh, you know, this might mean if you've moved on to organizations and they've moved on to organizations, you might have tracked them down through social media, LinkedIn or, or Facebook. And, you know, uh, when I apply for my PMP exam, I track down my past managers and say, look, I'm applying for the PMP exam. Um, you know, if I do get audited, would you be available to re review my experience and sign off on that should we need to? 10% chance, roughly, it is random. So you hopefully don't need to bother you with this, but are you okay with this? And that gives you confidence that if you do get audited, you've, always got, you've already got an open communication there to, to follow that through. Now, I don't, we haven't had anyone audited since COVID lockdown. So I don't know whether or not the are doing auditing or whether they're saying that's just too much hard work at the moment. We're going to put auditing aside. They haven't told us this for obvious reasons, but if they do, then you guys need to be ready to, to go down that path where you actually get, you actually have to send them this, this, this PDF. You can send them through electronically, especially if they live in a different country, you have to. They have to print that out, sign where it says to sign to say, yes, I vouch for Anya's experience in this volunteering capacity. They have to put that in an envelope close the back of the envelope and sign across the back seal. Okay, so sign the document itself and then sign across wow. the back seal. They then post that envelope to you. If you've got five different projects with five different people across five different countries, you've got to wait for all those envelopes to come back to you. You put all those envelopes with a copy of your education certificate, a copy from your certificate from Millpond for your PM education and send that to uh, PMI in the States. They then review that and say, great. It has to be a boxes. hard copy. It's got to be hard. So at the moment, all of it, yeah. it's all so physically signed. It's all hard copy. The, the reason why is because PMI know a lot of people want their PMP and they want to make sure the right people have the PMP for the right reasons. So they're trying to avoid all chances of plagiarism or cheating or forgery. So they're doing that physically. But I stress, I mean, it's, it's great to see PMI have gone online with a PMP exam. They're very, very cautious about going online with PMP exam. It didn't happen for many, many years. Um, COVID has forced that to happen, uh, which, is, which is a great thing. I don't know how this has impacted the audit process because we haven't had anyone audited since COVID. So it may have changed. They may be accepting digital electronic signatures through a PDF uh, self-signature facility. What I'm hearing is get it in now because they're not doing any auditing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that for get sure. It in. Uh, get it in. Hopefully, hopefully not. Yeah, but you yeah, know, definitely get it in, right? Get this application sorted. How long would they give you to send everything in? Because obviously, if you're going to different countries and it's they give you, days, they gave you, give you ninety days. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So coming back to let me let me share my screen again. Let me come back to some example project experiences. We actually to, to don't have one. ninety days until the second of January. And also do the 79 days at Christmas till Christmas. <laughs> so someone told me on Facebook, yeah, yeah. so someone told me on Facebook today. Yeah. Okay. Um, so no, please, please do get this and make this a priority because this is going to be the hurdle between you and being able to book your exam. And that's, that's the important thing. Right yeah. Here. Okay, Mike, so there's one other question, sorry. Grant, who was on our course last night, he said that he put his application form in and had the course information that he's doing now as his only um, professional development stuff um, and his application got accepted but I thought the rules were that we had to get out we had to do our application after our course finished on the dates that we put in yeah depending on 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 again we'll come back to the education screen and education section in a section in a second but it looks like they're doing it by month now so even if the course if, if you're on the start of first of October 
then you can put in October, it will give you the hours across October. So that's, yeah. I think, more, a bit of a, a loophole there. So, yeah, come back to education in a second. Um, so, you know, here, here's the format I suggest you use. So I was a project manager. Um, you, you know, if you were a technical architect or whatever, but you were the project manager, then state that in here. State that even though you weren't called, your, your title wasn't project manager, that's the role you're performing. So put that in there for XXS project. And talk about, you know, um, the, the objectives of the project. Now, here's me. Um, this is a suggestion from PMI based on information they sent to past students. They prefer to give you, you know, six, you break it into sections, initiation, planning, execution, monitoring, controlling, and closure. They're happy with these abbreviations, okay? They used, they used to like abbreviations because you only had 550 characters. You're not words now, so you've got a bit more room to wiggle. But talk about the key efforts, focus, the documents, the conversations, the people, the, the role you did in that project leadership position ended up with um, the project was successfully completed. Over the page, there's a whole bunch of examples to read and use as, as um, reference, okay? So please do this. Now, the reason why this is all in a Word document is because we can give you some examples, but also, you know, if you, if you got, say, five projects, write one up first, maybe write two up and send it through to us and we'll have a bit of a quick read over it. Make sure you got the right grasp of what you're doing here. Because again, we want to, help you where we can to make sure that whatever light you're presenting yourself into PMI, it's the right light. It's going to be seamless process for PMI. It's like, yes, here's another project manager stamp, move on. We don't want you to raise any sort of, you'd have been in a position to accidentally raise some alarm bells. Because we had in the past with, like I said, people giving program management references um, and talking more about the project itself rather than their role in the project. So this is just an opportunity to Put a bit of a filter between you and PMI, which is why we give you that word form. If you prefer to do it directly onto the, onto the wizard, you can do that, but you don't get the examples in the, in the document here. Um, you can PDF it, but then if us reviewing the PDF, we can't make quick write-ups within the PDF. Um, so we've got to sort of reply to you, email and sort of copy and paste things. It's just a bit more problematic for us. Whereas if you give us sort of in the Word document, we can turn track changes on and I can edit away and give you a quite quick review on what you've put so far. Um, so there's look, plenty of examples in there to have a bit of a read. And you know, like I said, it's buzzword bingo, work phases, identify stakeholders, refine scope and budget, produce a project management plan, supervise testing. One of the key words they do like is the term led and directed project team. So write that down. I led and directed the project team. If, you, if you're in the position where you led people and you told them what to do or you asked nicely, you led and directed the project team. So please use that. That's a... Um, that's, that's a few, a few ticks if we ever saw some. Uh, Even if you didn't, what if your work indirectly influenced the project team? <laughs> then I'd be, I'd be talking about, um, I'll work with the project team to establish a work breakdown structure. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's, to me, that sounds like a perfect thing the PM would do. Okay, so, I mean, I, I, this is the most important part of the application is just the wording you use and making sure you're staying within the lines um, to make sure you're representing yourself in the best light. So coming to the final section um, is your project management education hours. And you'll get 35 hours, regardless of whatever course you did with through Millpond, we'll give you a certificate of 35 hours. I mean, you're in a session tonight, we're going for an almost an hour, that's another hour of, of education. Um, now, my advice here is you can use Millpond if you like, but um, Millpond and our training company, Falcon Training, merged across um, May this year. So Falcon Training is a registered education provider with PMI. So we're in the system. The registered education provider is a global network that PMI, you know, we've basically signed up to with PMI. They've been through us, our, our trainers, our materials, our Everything we do as a business in terms of training and said, yes, we give you the thumbs up. You guys are doing what you should be doing in the training space. Now that, author, uh, that, that registered education provider program is coming to an end at the end of this year. It should have already closed off, but COVID they set it out to the end of this calendar year. Next year, they're replacing it with a new program called an authorized training partner. You don't need to worry about any of that, but there is a, there is a change behind the scenes in terms of the way PMI partner with organizations like Millpond and because they're going through this change, they've grandfathered the current status we're in. And because we went through a branding change, it's still the same content. We just put a blue mill pond instead of a, a dark blue falcon on our slides. Um, we, cannot, we cannot change the company name we have set up with PMI today. So my advice would be put the institution here, Falcon Training. 
Okay, so I mean, if you've already applied, don't worry about it. Don't, it's not an issue. But my preference would be to use Falcon Training in here because PMI know about Falcon Training. We're, we're, like I said, we're registered with them, and that will give make you know, oh, yeah, it's Falcon Training, great. They know what they're doing. So it's a, it's a clean, clean slide through for the education. We can give you if you do get audited, then based on whoever you put here, either Falcon or Millpond, we'll give you a certificate, either Falcon branded or Millpond. Uh, Falcon's still a registered company in New Zealand; it's just not publicly branded anymore. It's all going through through Millpond. Put my details here. You can use my Millpond address, or that's absolutely fine. And just put the. I mean, again, they're talking about months there, so the start month, end month, the project, and um, say you get 35 hours, and we'll give you a certificate for 35 hours of education. So that really shouldn't be a problem. If you haven't gone on a Prince2 course or any other course around managing people, managing risks, you've gone on a project online course or some sort of internal course around managing or, or, or engaging with your internal project management information system, you've gone on a time management course, um, health and safety courses, all this is relevant to project management so you can use it all. There is no time frame on your project management education. It can go back right up to the high school. If you recall, a bit hard to prove if you do audited, but if you recall going on some sort of courses, a tertiary institution, you did an engineering qualification and you did a couple of hours on project management, then you can use that, okay? And you just need to provide a copy of your engineering qualification certificate as a result of that. What about NCAID courses? IID courses, is that what you said, Emory? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, what, what was the course or what was the topic? Uh, you know, company directors or financial management or... Financial management, yep, um, bingo. Company directors, not so much. I mean, being a director of a company is quite different to being a project manager for a project. I'm, I'm sure there's a bit of stuff that you can sort of marry across. So if you went on, right. say, a three-day course, you might be able to claim, say, a couple of hours on project management-related topics. Um, finance course, I'd say that's 100% applicable. Oh, you're on mute there again, Anne Marie. Um, how many hours do we have to clock up? 35 hours. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. we've got them. We've all got yeah, so them. If, yeah, so you've, you've put your dates in there for the Millpond course or the Falcon course, um, and you should have 35 hours. But yeah, if you want you, to... Sorry, will you be able to afford issue that? Like, we've still got a few sessions to go, but will you be able so to... So when they used to ask it for by day, you couldn't put a day in the future. We're at the 6th of October now, so if you put October in there, then it's going to assume you did your 35 hours across October, even though we're six days in October. Yeah. So if you put start end of start date October, end date October, then at 35 hours, then they're going to assume you did 35 hours in six days, which is obviously technically possible. Um, so That's all good. You, you yeah. put it in there. If you, look, if anyone comes up with sort of an issue around, hey, look, I'm putting this data in here, and based on what it's, it's accepting, I'm missing a few hours, then give me a call and we can work through the details here. Look, my cell phone number's on screen now, so take a, take a note of that and, um, or just email me and um, I'll sort it out for you. But Mike, can I just confirm that the online course of Milton that we are just uh, taking now is the total rights 30 hours, but um, 35. You, are that you are saying that the 35 hours will be on the certificate. Yes, we will okay. give you a certificate for 35 hours. Um, there's plenty of conversations we've had in between sessions, plenty of work you guys have done around generating your own um, uh, presentations and practice questions. You've worked well more than 35 hours on this course, so don't worry about that. So Mike, again, the education here, what, what duration we should put? All in October? Uh, so Mohammed, so, so you started this course, what, back in? We did it in August. August. So put August, August yeah. put through to October, put 35 hours, hit submit, Okay, that's what I did already. All right. Yep. Okay. So, Mike, Mike, on our project um, descriptions, we should try and tick box every section. I understand. Look, um, just, just, uh, just, I don't mean to cut you off there, but yes. So, if you can, not you don't have to put initiation planning, monitoring, controlling, or executing monitoring, controlling, and uh, closing across all projects. Sorry, across every single project, but across your entire, I'm going to use the word portfolio of projects, you should have some experience in all different areas. So you might have done one project we just did initiating planning, another project we just did execution and closing, but across the group, you've got coverage here. Um, I reviewed one person's application today, and they didn't have any, any reference to initiation. I'm sure at any point across any project, you've identified some stakeholders. So therefore, you've done initiation. So put down initiation where you engage and identify key stakeholders in your project. 
and for close out, you know, there's lessons learnt log and things, mm. lessons learnt report and stuff like that. Because sometimes I've been moved on from projects because I've done a great job, but they they haven't been bothered about, you know, they haven't allowed me to have the time to close off. Yep. You know, don't tell PMP that. But, um, you know, the business needed me to move on to the next big project and didn't, you know, I handed over to BAU, but didn't yep. get the chance to close out completely so on everything. That- that, that close out column is closed project or phase. Okay. So at any point where you came to the end of a deliverable and you hand that deliverable, whether it's a piece of document documentation or whether it's some widget or a application or a, a floor of a building, you have gone through that handover process where you've gone through and reviewed what you've done and, and, and got acceptance from the client that that is going to work. Um, sure. Ideally you've gone through lessons learned and tracked your things and archived your project documentation, closed all your contracts and all that sort of good stuff we talk about. Um, if you've done some of those, fantastic. If you had an end of project party, put that in there because PMI is all about celebration. Um, so yeah. I've never met a person yet who's worked on a project. We haven't been able to tick one of those categories at any point during their history of project management. So <laughs> I'll be surprised if one of you guys are the first. Like another question, um, Trev and I, we work for consultants. So we do a lot of work managing our internal project team, but on the same project, we're also doing a lot of project management activities for the client, like risk yes. ID, um, stakeholder, but we're also managing our own internal budget to make sure that we don't have any overruns there and our own internal schedule for deliverables and things like that. So yes. it's both an internal and external PM role concurrently. Is there anything we should really try and highlight there or should we just kind of write it as though... I don't just, know. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's no dramas there. Just, just put in that, that you manage both internal and external stakeholders and you have both yeah. internal project teams and external project commitments that you need to look after. And so yeah. you're doing the whole project management responsibility across a couple of different areas. It doesn't matter. You know, PMI is very much of the view is we want to get away from this whole buyer supply mentality, them versus us. We are one team working together. It yeah. doesn't matter which team you, who actually pays your salary, we're working on this project together. And if we work together, we get the best outcomes possible. So um, look, yeah, explain a bit of that, a bit about that, but you shouldn't be, it shouldn't sort of hold you back or, or shouldn't worry you about how PMI is going to perceive that. Yeah. What if uh, your experience is not project, but again, I mean, I work for the same consultancy, but I'm more like a PMI role where I will touch multiple projects for very short periods of time for one particular knowledge area. It might be initiating, it might be monitoring. Again, should I list every single one of those as separate projects or maybe, you know? Look, it depends how many you're talking, Alex. And if it's just a handful, then sure, listen separately. But if you're talking, say, 15 plus, then I'd try and look for sort of themes where you're providing a almost yeah. like a project type service to a collection of projects or maybe a project type service to a particular client of, of yours. So if, if you can... It is. The client is internal. The client is a specific yeah. business unit within the yeah. organization, for example. So, so maybe, maybe group them up in those sort of initiatives because every, you know, every client will have unique needs. It'll all be, you know, time box in terms of when you're going to start providing that service and when you're going to end providing that service. Um, I guess what I suggest is whatever you put in here, ideally, if you're, if, if it's not quite as clear cut as a, traditional project would be just run it past your manager or someone who yep. will potentially sign off and say look here is what i'm submitting to pmi are you happy with, if i do need to get this signed off are you, would you be happy signing this off and they would say yeah, that, that's great sure i understand the limitations here so no worries at all we don't want to get a situation where you've written something which doesn't quite click with the person who you're asking to sign because then that looks bad for you where your person doesn't want to sign it off because it's not quite in line with their thinking Probably good to check with our colleagues who have already just been certified as well. So that'll be, that yeah. will help. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. I mean, you know, you please do, do reach out to, um, um, you know, obviously your colleagues and um, yeah. they, they, they might be more than happy to share the application as well. In terms of of yeah. Yeah. Mike, what about when you've got a, a something that started off as like just a, an interest, like an environmental interest, mm. um, it then became part of your work um, and it's now um, before the court uh, and sort of it spans seven years. And uh, We have had a couple of people, probably about maybe four or five people in the past, probably four years who have submitted their entire five years of experience or three years of experience in one 
project experience right up. Um, so if, if, is that where you're going with this? Is sort of this big yeah. piece of work which absorbed all your time? Yeah. Look, that, that's fine. I mean, look, PMI are quite commonly um, reviewing, you know, multi-million, billion-dollar projects uh, because that completely consumes someone. I mean, not, not necessarily implying that your project has to have a lot of money spent on it, but we have not had any issues at all with people submitting just one project experience. What I would encourage you to do is max out as many words as possible. Give them a full project experience somewhere to read. Um, don't just give them something lightweight in one project. So they'll be like, oh, this is a little bit, this is really a three-year project. You're giving me one paragraph on this. You know, give them as much as you can. Okay, thank you. Uh, okay, but so I was going to give that plus others. Sure. I mean, I'd, yeah. I'd say it's a good thing to give them three you know, right. give, give them a bit of a handful to give you, you know, if you especially worked on different sorts of projects and your roles differed a bit, um, look, give them a bit of dimension to your, your okay. career. Yep. Okay. That's it. Thank you. Great. Is everybody happy? Have we got all the questions answered? No, sorry, <laughs> Sharon. <laughs> um, just a question. What happens if you are like doing a rollout and you're doing on-floor training and stuff like that or pre-training and then you're doing on-floor training when you've rolled out? Does that count? Develop team. Well, yeah, we'll be, we'll Executing. Execute. Bingo, Ross, thank you very much. I mean, it's, I mean, develop team is a big part of, of our, our, our resource management knowledge area. Um, trying to get that high performing state and look, if it's part of your training is around that team or maybe uh, the key project stakeholders, then I'd, look, I'd, I'd claim that. Um, you know, if you did say 10% project management and your actual role was around um, actual training people uh, that consumed hours and hours and hours of effort, then I'd be a bit cautious about that. But if you did a bit of, I mean, change management is related to, to project management, training, um, user engagement, all that sort of stuff is part of the roles. So I wouldn't worry too much about that unless that was basically the project. So therefore, it's not really project management. Oh, and then um, I might have to give you a call to talk to you about the project, the, the project that I've just uh, finished off on because that has got some real alignment, hence why it's finishing off. Um, right. Yeah. But I need to just be careful about how I write it up, I think. Sure. And just as long as you've got a, um, a contact within the organization who would be willing to, to approve it, then I'd say, yeah, great, let's, let's look into it and, and put it in there. If, if, you, if you're feeling that the organization, you don't have the ability to reach out, if you do audited, then I'd try and look for other project experience that you can and, put in that place. No, that, they, they will be fine about okay. it. It's just... Um, the business case at the start was really out of line with yeah, yeah. the scope and the benefits. And so sure. we've had to do some mismatch, some matching up. So I, yeah, I'll talk, I'll, okay, I'll, sure. I'll give you a call and <laughs> talk to you about it. I think. No worries. Okay. Hey, my four, feel, sorry, yeah, just on. one more for validation on if, if you do get audited, yes. uh, if your role is project manager in your job description, mm -hmm. would a sign off from senior HR who can verify that you were there for the necessary number of hours or are they really looking for someone to verify that you did all the stuff you did? Um, they, they would prefer someone to verify that, you know, what you've written in your project experience in the time, the start date and end date is, is true. Now, PMI do not call your person who signs it off, they don't, they, ha they ha don't have any interaction with this person, these people at all. It goes through you. So as long as you can have a say, conversation with an HR manager, say, hey, look, I'm applying for the PMB exam. This is what I need to put. If I do need to get signed off, would you be happy to sign this off? And they say, yeah, sure, we'll go for it. Then PMI are going to assume that whoever signs it off is acting ethically and we can assume we can trust them. Does everybody feel they've got the information required to kick into the application? Yeah, just no one question. <laughs> if we do, uh, when we do have our thing ready for to, to review, can we come to you, even though Andy's our facilitator, Mike? Or yeah, you can. Look, I mean, the best thing to do is send it to 
um, training team at millpond.co.nz. And so Bronwyn oh, yeah. picks up all those emails and then she basically um, distributes them across myself, Andrew, and, and Christy. And uh, whoever answers the email quickest wins and um, you'll get one of us to talk to. So look, if you keep, if everyone emails me in the next week or so, look, I've, I've got a pretty hectic week this week and next week. Yeah, I'm, actually yeah, on, I'm actually on school camp with my daughter um, Wednesday ah, to Friday right. next week. So I'm, I'm not available then. So That's I suggest you if you do itself. want to. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, look, um, the best thing, training team at millpond.co.nz, uh, which is the email I imagine that the um, invite from today was sent out to. Um, send it through to that, and uh, Bromwell will manage the, the incoming, I guess, requests and uh, divide and conquer that way. That's probably the fastest way to get a turnaround for you. Cool. Thanks. And Mike, I've just got two questions. Can I fully confirm it's three years experience total, isn't it? If you've, you've got, got a degree. degree. Yep, three years. And and then um, the other thing is you, so if you're saying eight years back, is that eight years back to the month? So if we're in yes. October 2020, it's October 2012. 2012 October. Correct, yeah. Okay, thank you. That's my understanding based on how it used to work. I don't know whether or not they've started 2020 to any time in 2012, but I'm pretty sure it'll be October. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Super. All right. I do want to stress, please uh, jump into this, uh, get it in, either do the application, uh, the, the template on our website, or um, go through and uh, do it directly on the web, PMI website. The sooner you get your application in, the sooner you can actually book and pay for your exam, which then means you can actually lock in an exam date, uh, which I said earlier is, is a very important step. Um, Payment will be by credit card. It's a quite a lengthy process to get invoiced by PMI. So um, if you're working for government, it's probably easier to pay for it yourself than do an expense claim. If hopefully it's the process available for you. Um, what else do I want to say about that? Oh, it normally takes PMI, they say eight days. Most of the time they turn around four to five days, your application. Uh, so you apply, you get, you should get an email four to five days later, maybe eight, um, with PMI saying, yep, you, you're all good to go to the next stage. Please chip, keep checking the PMI.org website. You, you, know, you log in, go to my dashboard on the right-hand side, it'll come up with your certification application process. Keep checking that on a daily basis because sometimes people say they don't get the emails from PMI saying they reviewed and approved it. It sometimes might go to some sort of spam or a, um, um, email um, uh, blocking type system if your organization's got one of those. So, uh, which you probably should do. Um, so please just do check that manually. Don't just wait for an email and three weeks later you realize that they approved it two weeks ago. All right, team, I'll let you get on with the rest of your Tuesday night. Thanks for dialing in. Hopefully that's a little bit clearer to everybody. Um, all the best with your studies and I'm sure we'll touch base with many of you in due course. Mike, Thanks, Mike. great. Thank you. Mike. Thanks, Mike. Okay. Mike, are you able to email me when might suit that I can just give you a 10 minute conversation? I'm happy to stick around now if that's oh, yeah, you. Oh, yeah, that would be, yeah, that would be good. Thanks. Yeah. Cool.